There's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With over 140 channels in your vehicle, your all-access trial includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with SiriusXM Video On Demand. What you love is on now. Hey, we are closing out our marine audio sessions and we're going to close it out in a big way. We've got Clarion Marine in the house today and joining us is product trainer Rob Haynes, who has a lot to say, especially about some new source units. It's going to be an exciting one, guys. Don't you dare go away. This is CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM. Clarion Marine Audio starts now. Hey guys, what's going on? And thanks for tuning in to another CMA Connected presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Now, you don't need me to tell you that when it comes to the Marine audio game, man, Clarion's been there since the get-go, like legit get-go. Um, so when the news came about that JL Audio acquired the Clarion Marine brand, well, certainly that sent a lot of buzz through the industry because you know what? Uh, let's be honest, JL, Marie, uh, JL Audio has a certain way of doing things. And so there's going to be some expectations set. They start out right away with, with the, uh, the redesign of a couple key products, including speakers. But today we've got some pretty exciting stuff to talk about because we're talking about some brand new products in the source unit category. So don't you dare go away. We've got Rob Haynes coming on. But first, let's bring on our counterpart over at Gemsend, who is the Canadian distributor for Clarion Marine, Mr. Dave Singh. Ben, good to see you today. Oh, man, today's a good one. We saved a, a big one for the end because it's not every day we get some exciting new product launches. And I think today we're about to cover something fresh. I think this will be the first time many people see this product and we're really excited about it. Source units have definitely been a hot topic lately, uh, especially with everything going on in the industry. So it's nice to see that there's going to be new additions to help deal with the uh, challenges that uh, some of us have been going through. Absolutely. You know, Clarion, I mentioned, Dave, you and I both know this, like old school, it's been from the beginning of Marine Audio. Clarion is one of the first companies to actually have marine specific marinized product in the category, if I'm not mistaken. I, I would say that, uh, you know, they were one of the pioneers of getting into the marine market and, and being serious about it. And uh, over the years, they certainly earned their place. They're a brand that's a household name to most boat owners that, that are out there. They probably own some Clarion product at their time. And this new relationship and this new partnership with uh, the folks at JL Audio has definitely reinvigorated all the cool things that they bring to the table at price points that are uh, uh, achievable or attainable for the average guy. I'm excited to see exactly how that influence has played out, especially what we're going to cover today. But I would like to hear you comment, Dave, on, on what I was saying about how there would be a certain expectation set forth, you know, having that JL audio brand kind of behind the Clarion Marine brand. I think with the experience that the folks at JL Audio have, there's definitely going to be some uh, influences, but uh, you know, certainly there's going to be a difference in, in the performance of the product. Uh, but you know, there's some very cool thought processes, uh, some uh, forward thinking that the folks have done uh, between the two companies, things like making sure that the whole sizes are the same size and the bolt pattern. So, you know, should you buy a vessel that already has Clarion Marine speakers in it and you're looking to step it up to the next level of performance, perhaps uh, M3 or M6, that's easy for you to do without having to drill holes and that sort of stuff. So, you know, there's good, definitely some sort of uh, synergy that's going on, but definitely both brands have their own identity and, you know, their own... Um, um, uh, Recipe, recipe, yes, absolutely. And you know what? That's a great segue because no further uh, evidence do you need to look than how Clarion Marine is benefiting from the, how shall I say, marketing prowess 
that the JL Audio team has. And we're going to roll a tape right now. It's talking about the new premium line or the recently launched premium line of speakers. And I think if you know about marketing a little bit in this industry, you'll see where the JL Audio influence has rubbed off. Let's roll the tape. I don't know about you, Dave, but I don't remember ever seeing visuals like that from Clarion. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, there's definitely a new flair being added mm, to, to the nice. brand, yeah. And that's great for dealers to know that there's that energy behind the marketing and promotion side of things that get customers excited for the brand, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, having said that, I think it's time that we bring on our expert today. Um he is at this point, uh, how can I say the VIP member of the CMA Network Training Squad. Uh, his name is Rob Haynes, and he is the product trainer for Clarion Marine. What's going on, Rob? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me again. And you VIP like status, man. Right, VIP status. You guys want that low squad, standards. Right? That's, I, I, I'm going to have to follow up on that. Anyhow, um, yeah, man, super excited to have you on. Legendary trainer from JL here talking to us about Clarion Marine with some new product. I don't know how much more exciting you can get than that. Yeah, it's uh, definitely some exciting stuff we're going to be talking about today. Um, some needed refreshment, I think you can say, to the source unit family uh, for Clarion Marine Audio. And uh, I'm excited to be able to unveil the uh, new source units today with everyone. Great. So this has kind of been in the works for the for for some time. I mean, of course, Clarion has uh, you know a, a following that that goes many many years about all their standard gear. But this is kind of like a step forward, not only in in engineering but also in design and and the look and feel of everything, isn't it? Yeah, without a doubt. You know, uh, when we were approached by Clarion, I want to say it was back in 2018. They had made the decision at the the corporate level for Clarion in Japan that they were going to pull out of the, the consumer facing side of things and wanted to solely focus on their OEM business. And they reached out to JL Audio uh, about licensing the Clarion Marine brand. So and that's really where, where the deal happened. So Clarion is Marine is still owned by Clarion and the, the big company that owns them. But JL Audio is responsible for maintaining the line. So that means not just the sales and marketing, tech support, training, but we're also developing all of the new products as well. So the speakers we launched last year that we just saw in the video, the source units we uh, are gonna talk about in just a moment, they're all ground up designs from our uh, uh, design team. John Zimmerman, who's the brand manager for Clarion, who's been on here a couple of times with you guys, really has done an exceptional job of creating some amazing products that really fit in the Clarion Marine lineup. As you mentioned, it's Clarion's been a, a rock solid name in the Marine audio world. And with this JL Audio partnership, we're just able to take it to that next level, but still keep it affordable for the customers mm. that may not be able to uh, afford a JL Audio type product. They have something at a lower price point with the same attention to detail and scrutiny <laughs> into development and testing and the marketing and everything that a JL Audio product would have as well. Very, very nice. Priced right with the DNA dripped down from their big brother or sister at JL. That's right. Without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to give you the mic, Rob, as you always do so so perfectly. Let's throw up the presentation. Let's get into uh, this new product from Clarion Marine. All right. Sounds good. So uh, what we're going to talk about today with our agenda is um, just kind of talked about it already, but just a quick reminder again about uh, the relationship with Clarion and JL Audio. And then we're going to get into the new source units for 2022. And we have three models that I'm excited to show you today. The CMM 30, the CMM 
30 BB, the CMM20, and a series of new wired remote controllers that will work with those as well. So that's what we're gonna discuss today. And as we've kind of been talking uh, about Clarion Marine, it really is stronger than ever, thanks to the strategic light licensing partnership with JL Audio. And again, you know, uh, we don't, John Zimmerman has really done a great job designing and developing products, working with the Clarion engineers and the JL Audio engineers to make sure we still keep that high standard uh, at an affordable price point. And really it's been a win-win. On top of designing uh, just new products, we've really cleaned everything up. You know, as Ben uh, alluded to earlier, the marketing is at the next level um, by taking advantage of the talented marketing team we have at JL Audio. Um, we were able to clean up the sales and distribution of the line, which for our retail partners is ex ex extremely helpful knowing, uh, you know, it's just, it's not everywhere. It's more protected. It's better for the consumers. You're buying from reliable sources now. Um, so a lot of work has gone into not just the development of the products, but cleaning up the overall brand uh, as well with us uh, overseeing all of it. So it really is an all-time high for Clarion Marine. Uh, last year, as we discussed, we uh, did release uh, two new lines of coaxial speakers in the Clarion Marine family. We have the premium uh, models with those beautiful sport grills and six and a half and 7.7 inch models. And then the standard option as well with the six and a half inch and 7.7 inch coaxials. Of course, we got the new source units that we're going to be talking about today with the uh, CMM30 family and the CMM20 source unit. And of course, there are still new products in development as well. Um, this is not the source units are not where it stops with Clarion Marine. We have a lot of cool stuff in the pipeline, um, probably into next year, but you know, uh, a lot of stuff in the works to further expand the brand from where it currently is. And of course, all Clarion Marine Audio is available through Dave and Jemsen as our distributor in Canada. And of course, uh, your local Clarion Marine Audio dealer up there. But before we get into the source units, uh, one thing that is standard across the entire Clarion family, whether it's a source unit, an amplifier, a speaker, everything is salt and sun certified. So, you know, these are not just car audio products, you know, marinized and put into a, into a, a vessel. Uh, everything's designed for moisture. Is it fresh water? Is it salt water? The intense UV. Again, UV is not that big of a deal up in Canada. Your boats are out of the water maybe a couple months out of the year. But in South Florida, where it's marine season and summer, 365 days a year, that UV then comes into a play. So again, extensive UV testing, vibration testing, all of the electronics and the amplifiers and source units have coated boards to reduce any potential corrosion from that salty air or any moisture that may be able to, to get in there. So these are purpose-built marine audio, power sports audio uh, components. And the three new models we have for 2022 are sleek and completely packed with features. And that's the CMM30BB, which is a black box unit, the CMM30, and then the CMM20. So let's start by talking about the CMM30 family of source units. And the reason I'm going to talk about them at the same time is other than the physical display and controls on the CMM30, they're identical. They have the same amount of pre-outs. They have the same source options, the same power options. They are literally identical with one another, except the 30BB, you're going to need to use a MFD or wired remote control to control it, where the CMM30 has that nice built-in color LED display and physical rotary knob and large uh, backlit buttons that make it easily controllable. So other than how you display and control it, they're identical with one another. So everything we're going to talk about going forward goes for both the 30 and the 30 BB model. And as I mentioned, MFD, uh, both models are NEMA 2000 certified. Uh, right now, um, so these source units are going to be launching uh, towards the end of Q2. So hopefully end of April into early May. Um, so as of right now, as we're finalizing everything, we have verified NEMA uh, uh, verified NEMA compatibility is what the word I was looking for with Garmin and Simrad MFDs. 
Of course, uh, how everything's going to be laid out, controlled, that varies on the MFD manufacturer itself. So what you see on a Garmin is probably going to look different than a Simrad, and that's just how the MFDs work. And that's common across all marine source units. That's not just uh, with the two Clarion models here that we're talking about. So that's just always something to be aware of. And of course, we always recommend to make sure with the MFD manufacturer that they are going to be compatible. These do use standard NEMA 2000 EP, which stands for Entertainment Protocol Commands. Um, so really what it comes down to, it's getting the MFD manufacturer to unlock that source unit where their MFD can see that specific model. So once those other guys come around and unlock the Clarions, you'll have that uh, ability as well, just because of the standard NEMA uh, 2K EP PGNs that these use. One thing we do recommend, though, with the black box model, the CMM 30 BB, that at the bare minimum, you have a CMR 20 wired remote controller on the boat. And we'll talk about those when we go on. But the reason for that is that's really the only way on the BB to get full access or control of it. Uh, you know, going into the settings and changing uh, the uh, illumination level of uh, something or going in and changing some of your source options. You can't do that through a standard NEMA connection. So for full access, especially to the settings and some of the configuration options, you will need a wired remote control on the vessel with the CMM30BB since it doesn't have that built-in display. So just something to keep in mind there. But source-wise, my goodness, oops, I think I skipped forward too fast. There we go. These things are featured packed. Both the 30 and the 30 BB use an Apple certified USB 2.0 connection with 2.1 amp charging, which is really nice. Uh, quicker charge rate to get your devices to uh, full power and make sure they stay charged while you're out playing on the water all day. High quality Bluetooth audio streaming and auxiliary input. I don't know if anyone really uses an aux input anymore, but it's there if you need it. Um, I'm sure the sponsors will love this Sirius XM ready with an optional SXV300 tuner that's sold separately, but plug and play with the CMM 30 BB and CMM 30. You've got a global digital AM FM tuner built in weather band. Now it does state for the U S only for the NOAA weather band, but I would imagine you know, if I'm wrong, correct me later especially in the Great Lakes region or any anywhere near the U.S. border, I'm sure you're going to get bleed through for the weather band uh, to know what's going on when you're out on the water. You can store up to 18 presets um, across all sources. So a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, you can save those pr up to 18 presets to the source. When you pick a preset, it'll automatically switch over to the source or the tuner that that preset uh, is part of. So really everything you would need to, to enjoy your day out on the water with your friends or whether you're by yourself fishing, uh, you're set when it comes to sources with the, the two CMM30 models. Where they really start to stand apart is how flexible they are when it comes to system design. And that's because of four independent zones of pre-outs. So we can uh, essentially have four separate zones, uh, run that to uh, one one large amplifier, run them each to individual amplifiers. It's all up to you how you want to design it, but a very flexible setup, especially being that zone four can be configured to be full range or as a subwoofer. And when it's set up for subwoofer, you'll have independent subwoofer control. You actually have independent control across all of the zones. Uh, you can go in and adjust each zone individually. So if you wanted to maybe turn up your towers from everything else on the vessel, you can go in and turn that individual zone up. You also, of course, then have master volume control, which will control all the zones, including any relative differences between one zone to another. Another nice feature on both of these models is a five band parametric EQ. You also have basic tone controls as well, your bass, uh, mid range, treble. But with the five band parametric EQ, we can kind of fine tune it and dial it in a little more than what we'd be able to with just a basic locked bass, mid and uh, trouble control, which is what you typically see. What I really like with these two models though, are the adjustable high pass filters. So each output has an adjustable filter. If I remember correctly, it's a uh, 80, 120 and 160 Hertz can be set for your high pass. And the reason why I think it's important having adjustable high pass filters, especially on zones one and two, is we also have onboard power. 
for both the CMM 30 BB and the CMM 30. So uh, by using deck power, I always like to be able to filter out those lower frequencies that could potentially get the speaker into trouble, especially when we start maybe overdriving the source unit and clipping the amplifier. Uh, so for me, it's a nice reliability, um, you know, backup, if you will, to have that high pass filter to help make sure we can send everything we want to the speakers, everything the speakers really designed to play and make sure we filter out those lower frequencies, which uh, depending on how it's being listened to, could potentially cause problems for the speakers. But we have a 25 by four watt at four ohm class D chip amplifier inside. That's also two ohm stable. So that means we can double up the speakers on that onboard power, do two, two speakers per channel, assuming they're a four, single four ohm driver like the Clarion ones are, and get uh, about roughly 45 watts per channel at two ohms. And of course, get that extra output as well from doubling up our cone area by adding another speaker to the channel. But what's really neat about this onboard power is we can use zones one and two for onboard power, but we can still take advantage of all four pre-outs. So you can actually run zones one and two with an external amplifier and the built-in power on the source unit. So if we did that, if I adjusted zone one by itself, it would not only turn up the speakers connected directly to our CMM30 or CMM30BB, but it would control the pre-out with the amplifier and those connected speakers as well. So when we start talking about system design, you can really start to see how you can get some very advanced complex systems on these larger vessels and easily control it all with the CMM30 family. So when we talk about system ideas, you know, here's a basic setup, something that can very easily be done with both the 30 and the 30 BB. And we just got two pairs of speakers connected directly to the source unit. We're gonna take advantage of that four by 25 watt amplifier at four ohm. We'll use zone four and select subwoofer operation, connect that to an amplifier and a subwoofer. And we've got a great system to start with. Um, you know, it's gonna sound good. I'm always a firm believer though, you should always have an external amplifier on a boat. You want that extra power. Um, it helps overcome the road noise or road noise, wind noise, the water noise, the motor. But sometimes, you know, it's not easy to add amplifiers to vessels. You might not have the room. There might not be the charging capacity. So that's where taking advantage of the two ohm load uh, operation on the source unit comes into play. Because again, now we can double up the speakers with a two ohm load on the on the driver or on the amplifier get 45 watts of power split between the two drivers so we're getting roughly the same power to each driver but we've doubled the cone area now so that's going to give us a significant increase in output and again as everything set properly should help make sure we have the needed reliability with those speakers as well but if you really wanted to get crazy we can do that um, this is like when i look at a system like this it blows me away with how many speakers that you can actually do. Um, again, if you have an amplifier that's two ohm stable, which most amplifiers are, especially the, the ones in the Clarion family, you can connect up to four speakers, uh, you know, a, a per or actually eight speakers per amplifier if we took advantage of the two ohm load. But here we have four channel amplifiers running three different zones. We've got zone four set up for a subwoofer. And zones one and two also running off of the onboard power. So you can see zones one and two, those are going to be the red and green speakers and the red and green signal paths. We've got 16 speakers running off of those two zones. And then you got zone three, the blue zone. Maybe that's your tower speakers. And then you got your subwoofer zone as well. So uh, really, the sky's the limit when it comes to designing systems with the CMM30BB and the CM30. Now, as I discussed, the only difference between the CMM30BB and the 30 is one's a black box and one has physical uh, controls and a really nice ultra bright LCD display. And my favorite feature about this display as someone that wears polarized sunglasses and can't see anything most of the time on a, on a display, you can view it with polarized sunglasses. And, you know, uh, John and the team really did a good job of understanding some of the issues you may run into out on the water, especially when you're typically wearing sunglasses, there's bright light. So an ultra bright display, very easy to see. We wanna make sure it's safe when you're operating the vessel. So large controls, a nice solid fueling rotary knob, 
nice feel on the backlit button. So very easy to see at night as well. And of course that bright, uh, uh, I wanna say it's a 3.1 inch uh, display. So very, very nice. It'll also on the display through USB, Sirius XM or Bluetooth, show any album art or art that's uh, tied to that file or the channel. So a nice, nice option as well for those that like to see the, uh, the graphics for their music. And of course it has a day and night mode as well. So there's an illumination wire. Typically you'll connect it to your nav lights. So when you turn those on at night, your uh, screen will inverse. So during the daytime, you have that nice bright white display on the left. And then when it switches over to nighttime mode, you get that nice, it's a really sexy looking, just blue display, very clean white font and just a uh, stunning look. And you know, really this as Ben mentioned earlier is a totally new look, total new appearance. These are completely ground up source units and it really does show because they look sleek and they've got all of the features you could ask for in a in a higher end marine source unit. We also have the CMM20, which also is a very feature packed unit, just had a lower price point. Um, so here we have a standard USB 2.0 connection with a one amp charger, still more than enough to, to keep your device charged while you're out playing on the water. We've got the Bluetooth streaming, we have the aux input, we've got the global AM FM, we can still store the 18 presets and the weather band. We do lose the Sirius XM readiness though. So if you do want Sirius XM, you will need either the CMM30 or the CMM30 BB. But other than that, source wise, again, pretty much everything you need is there on the CMM20. And again, a very flexible system design. This one does have only one pair of preouts. Uh, it's a one and a half volt. You have three and a half volt preouts on the CMM30 uh, line of products. And that one pre-out can be set up to either be full range or subwoofer control. So again, this is probably going to be more steered to the smaller systems you would see on a smaller vessel or maybe just a, 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 even on a larger vessel. Maybe it's just treated as one big zone. Um, but you've got the options to, to set that here. Um, again, we have onboard power with the CMM20, 4x25 at 4 ohms and 4x45 at 2 ohms. And then we have basic tone controls, so your bass, your treble, and there's also four preset EQs that you can select uh, as well. So again, when we get into the system ideas for a CMM20, again, something basic here, we have our standard series coaxials connected directly to the, uh, the built-in amplifier uh, on the CMM20. And that's another selling feature on the CMM30 is that uses a higher quality, I know the power outputs are the same, but we use a class D chip amplifier on the CMM30, so a little more efficient, um, you know, generates less heat, all those good things. Um, still a quality amp uh, chip on the CMM20. It's just a little bit of a better one on the CMM30 family. But again, we can see here we've got our speakers connected directly to the source unit. We're going to take advantage of that one pre-out zone for a subwoofer and run that. Um, again, if we need more output, we can take advantage of the two ohm capabilities of the built-in amplifier and double up our speakers and get eight speakers, four in each zone. Or, you know, what I think would be the probably the best way to do it is to take advantage of a five-channel amplifier. And now we've got that pre-out, again, running two pairs of speakers for zones one and two. And then we've got the dedicated uh, subwoofer channel as well. Another option you can do is if you have amplifiers that have dedicated pre-outs, you can run that two-channel signal into the first amplifier and then daisy chain the signal to the amplifiers as needed. Or if we do need more output, again, we can take advantage of that onboard power and we can connect uh, either uh, a pair or two pairs of speakers, depending what uh, impedance we're trying to nail down uh, directly to the source unit using its onboard power. So again, here you can see we've got six speakers now for zones one and two potentially up to eight if your uh, full range amplifier is two ohm stable. And again, even without a lot of outputs, we can power a significant amount of speakers. And, you know, for me, especially in Marine, I'm all about increasing speakers and, and displ displacement potential in the vessel as a better way to get louder. You know, when we start adding more power, we're demanding more current from the charging system. Uh, there's more physical space on the boat that gets taken up, more wirings needed. Uh, so for me, I like adding speakers as a way to get loud. And this is a great way to do that, if, even when you might be limited with the amount of pre-outs or zones that you can actually run. But very, very nice for your system design, whether you're looking for something basic or something more advanced. 
the big difference on the display for the CMM20, it's the same chassis as the CMM30. Uh, it just uses a, uh, a standard LCD display. Um, again, very bright, very easy to read. Does have a dimmable option, again, using illumination wires. So when you hit your nav lights at night, that'll dis, uh, dim the display and turn on the backlighting so it's easy to see. It's not blinding. No one wants that big, bright display in their face at night when they're trying to pilot their vessel through the waters and get to the docks and through all of those tight areas. So, again, it's all about not just easy to see, easy access, but it being safe uh, while the boat's being piloted as well. And all of those remotes are um, source units uh, can be controlled by three new wired remote controls that we're launching as well. And those are the CMR30, the CMR20, and the CMR10. And they're very, very nice units. The CMR30 uses the same display as the CMM30 source unit. So whatever you would see on a CMM30, you will see everything, including the menus, uh, the way you search USB files or your, your uh, iPod or iPhone, everything you see on the source unit, you will see on the CMR30 remote. Uh, it does use a smaller footprint than the actual source unit itself. So a very compact remote still uses the same screen though. Um, and that's really uh, just, you know, if you want full control wherever you are in the vessel, this is the remote control you want. This is also, I know we recommend the bare minimum using a CMR20 with the CM30, CMM30BB, but I would recommend the CMR30 to go with that. Um, having that nice display gives you a little more visual into everything. It's easier to navigate through the menus, through your setting options, just a very sleek, really nice looking wired remote control. The CMR20 is going to do everything that the CMR30 does as well. It's just going to be with that standard LCD display that's also found on the CMM20 remote. So you don't have that nice, um, you know, album art, the Sirius XM art, all of that stuff. But you'll have what you need to control your source unit no matter where you are on the vessel or out on the water. And if you just need something that gives you basic control, so, you know, change your source, track up or down, volume up or down, that's where the CMR10 comes into play. And that's just your traditional round gauge style remote control, um, plugs directly in, and you're good to go. One thing that is important to discuss, though, is that these new source units and new wired remote controls are not backwards compatible with any previous generation product. So what I mean by that, the CMR30, the CMR20, and the CMR10 only work on the new CMM30, CMM30BB, and CM20, CMM20 products. They will not work with an M608 or M508 or any of the previous generation source units out there. Likewise, any older wired remote controls will not work with the new products. These are new generation, ground up, and are only designed to work with one another. So if you have an old wired remote control on your vessel and you want to put in a new CMM30, be prepared to replace that wired remote uh, as well. So continuing on though, while we do have these new source units, we are continuing on the very popular DIN size and gauge radios in the Clarion Marine family. So the M608, which it was like a plug and play replacement for I think three or four previous models, uh, that continues on for the very popular, uh, you know, DIN size chassis, but oversized uh, face. Um, the M508, which is your traditional DIN size radio, and the GR10BT, which is the gauge radio, are again very popular in the personal watercraft, the sea dew, jet ski, golf carts, off-road vehicles. Um, so we are keeping the, the, these, this family of source units uh, as well, because there's definitely a need for them. Uh, you know, you know, we talk a lot today about multi-zone controls and flexibility for large systems, but you don't always need all of that. Sometimes you just need a pair of pre-outs and, and something that fits a more traditional size. And that's really where the 608, the 508, and the GR10BT come into play. They're very important parts of the Clarion Marine family, um, you know, in addition to really complement the flexibility that the new CMM family of products bring out. So um, I'm excited to see those continue on, but I'm really excited that in a, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so, we'll start to see the CMM30BB, CMM30, 
and CMM20 with all the wired remote controls hit the market. So um, that's pretty excited for all of that. And um, I guess that's all I have. So we can jump into any questions you guys or the audience might have. question which i believe you answered is it the same cable for new remotes as the old remotes and obviously the question or the answer there is no it's a new proprietary platform so there are different cables that are required to use uh, the new remotes with the new radios okay very cool um, I, I did have some questions, but you know what? I want to give Rob a, an opportunity to take a break. We, we, we have a secondary video that kind of highlights um, the regular speakers in the Marine. I keep on messing up jail audio, Clarion, Clarion Marine lineup. Um, let's, go, let's roll the tape and we'll be right back after the break. Got some more questions coming in. Uh, I want to address some of the ones that are coming in through the mm -hmm. audience. And it's, it's about the remote controls because obviously okay. it's a new generation of remotes, as David just mentioned about the wiring. But the question is, can we add multiple remotes together? You can. Um, so we do sell uh, extensions as well as splitters for the remote. So if you want to add multiple remotes to a source unit, you would just need to get the, the splitter cable and any extensions uh, if needed. Um, maybe a bit of an insider secret, or we'll call it a tip here. Um, the wired remotes, the the cables they use, the extensions, the splitter, they're the same as a JL Audio Media Master. So we do sell the Clarion extensions and splitters by themselves as the Clarion brand. Um, but if you're a JL Audio dealer and you have Media Master wired remote extensions and splitters in stock, those will work with the new Clarion uh, remotes. Um, if you're really good at knowing harnesses and plugs, you may have even noticed on that first slide when we showed the CMM 30 BB and the CMM 30, they actually use the same plugs and harnesses as well as a JL Audio Media Master. So if the time comes, you know, maybe we have a Clarion system in there and then they want to upgrade to JL Audio in the future. Um, it's not just on the speakers with the bolt pattern and the, the mounting diameter and everything, but the source units are all plug and play replacements as well across the two brands. And to take that question a little bit further, you can also mix and match the type of remote throughout one system. Yeah. So like we could use a CMR 30 in one area and maybe the more standard CMR 20 or CMR 10 in a different area. If we just needed basic controls and didn't want to have full access to the settings or individual zone controls or anything like that. So I think that addresses everything with the new generation. And just to reiterate what, what uh, Robert said, not backwards compatible with the previous generation. Correct. So if you're going to go with the new system in about stake on this generation, they're all intercompatible. You can do all different remotes and as many remotes as you want. You can have a remote mm -hmm. everywhere and that'll all work. I think the next question, Dave, is going to be catered more towards a Gemsen perspective. Wondering if there's going to be any plans to launch a Clarion Marine display. Well, existingly, there is a, a display that will be available, um, a countertop display, which we will um, share the information with in the future. And, um, you know, we have some other things in the works. So, you know, stay tuned. 
Very good, very good. So, I mean, I'm going to take this opportunity to, to quickly, if we can bring up the graphics. If you're interested in Clarion Marine, obviously you want to get a hold of Dave and his team over at Gemsend. They are the Canadian distributor for Clarion Marine. Um, I want to continue with some of this uh, these features that you mentioned, uh, Rob. Yeah. Um, the hideaway unit, right? I know, I know, I, I think it's new. I, I'm, I'm, I can only expect there's going to be more applications for chart plotter integration or compatibility as we move forward through the Nimia um, cable. Um, my question for you is going back to your comments about ensuring to have a remote um, also installed. Now, so I just want to make sure we understood what that meant. That meant if you're planning to do a system only with the hideaway box, that's probably not your best avenue. Well, yeah, I mean, so being there's limitations what uh through the nema 2k ep protocol can 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 be done so you know this is a full featured source unit so you have the options to turn on and off zones there's display options there's eq options there's a lot of stuff that's not part of a normal uh what's called a pgn for uh, it's you know, the the essentially the protocol for the nema 2k network so to have access to that stuff, since NEMA doesn't support it, you do have to have that standalone remote control to have that. That's why we say for full access, it's recommended because there's just things through NEMA you can't do when it comes to settings and uh, some other aspects of the source unit. And that's just a, a NEMA limitation, unfortunately. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. And Another question also, coming. Yep. Sorry, go ahead, sorry, sorry, I was just going to say, it also depends on the manufacturer, how they've mapped out the buttons and what they've chosen to include on the MFD. Right, because you have no control over what they do as far as their interface on their units are concerned. Right. Correct. So, understood, understood. Um, here's an interesting question. Can you mix JL mm -hmm. and Clarion remotes within the same... There's a lot of remote questions. Within yeah. the same system. You know, that's a great question. I honestly don't know. Um, while they use the same cables, I would imagine... Mm -hmm. Being that these are they are standalone designed separately, you know, we did some things to maintain um, some uniformity when it comes to plug and play to help upgrades for whether it's an OEM partner or for our retail partners or even just the the DIYer that's wants to upgrade themselves. So that does simplify that process. However, being that they're per two separate purpose built units, I am pretty darn sure the the firmware and the communication between them is going to be different. So I would say no. But I will find out and get a definite answer at some point. Well, you can always circle back, Rob, onto this thread with this video and uh, maybe put yeah, it in the absolutely. comments at a later time. And that's that, a good question, I, have to, I have to write down the date because I've never seen you actually not have the full answer. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Wow, that's that's a good question. That's a good yeah, question, Daddy, whoever, good. whoever thought of that. I have been um, I wanted to take a moment to really uh, give props where props are due. I think the design like the design overall and the new fresh look, the lines, the, the graphics, the lighting, everything about it is screaming modern and up to date. Uh, and, you know, this is not to put down the, the previous generation by mm -hmm. any means, because obviously they're all nice, but there certainly is some new modern design cues in the new system. And I think that's going to be really attractive once dealers get a hold of these uh, units and put them in front of a customer when they, you know how it is, you get them to the you yeah. touchy feely, turn the knob, you need to do all these things to, to, to finalize that sale sometimes. But I think these might sell themselves once dealers get a chance to, to oh, play with without them. a doubt, especially the CMM 30 with that beautiful display. Mm -hmm. And when you touch the road, I mean, that rotary knob feels solid. The push buttons feel solid. There's no rattles or they, they don't feel cheap. It's a solid push. You have the backlighting, they're sleek. Um, yeah, once on a display, they're just they're gonna pop and look amazing, and obviously they look great in vessels as well. Well, obviously, yeah. And I noticed um, when you talked about the knob and the the, the system layouts that you mm -hmm. presented, um, for, as far as subwoofer control, that means there's it's built in, right? The subwoofer level, if you're using that uh, that type of setup, you don't need to install an additional <coughs> subwoofer control knob per se. Absolutely. Um, you know, every zone, um, especially on the 30s, when we have you know up to four zones. Each one can be individually controlled. So again, master volume will turn everything up. You can then go in and turn each zone up or down separately, whether it's full range or subwoofer. And um, so, yeah, like if you wanted to adjust your sub, you just go to zone four, turn it up and down. That won't affect the other zones or master volume, just like a standalone uh, base knob will. So definitely cleans up the install on the vessel. And the other thing you gotta remember, most of the time, you know, JL Audio sells a um, <coughs> uh, marine grade uh, uh, HDRLC for our M series amplifiers. Um, I don't think Clarion, we have bass knobs for those amps. So, you know, um, but most bass knobs, even if it's a universal one through RCAs, 
they're not marine grade. They're not designed to be out in the elements. They're designed for a car. So by having it built into the source unit, that's just one less thing that could fail in that demanding marine environment. Oh, we're, we got a chatty bunch today. Here's another great question coming in from Ryan. When it comes, switching gears, no longer talking about remotes. Okay, we're switching. <laughs> when it comes to the RGB um, on the speakers, mm -hmm. does Clarion offer an RGB controller? And if not, would it work with other controller brands? Yeah, so at the moment, we don't have an RGB controller uh, from Clarion. Um, but RGB wire, it's just standard RGB. So, um, you know, you could connect it, you know, JL Audio. We have an RGB controller that we came out with for the M6 family of speakers that can easily control the Clarions. Any RGB controller will. They're just standard lighting. My recommendation, though, is always make sure you have a high quality RGB controller. A lot of inexpensive ones can add a lot of unwanted noise to the system. Uh, they're just noisy. And then the speakers pick that up. Um, or the speakers, if you just want a static color, they can be hardwired a specific way. And all that's included in the manual telling you how to hardwire it to a switch if you just wanted them blue, green, or a standard solid color. Uh, my two cents to that is um, just from having experience in this particular uh, scenario, you want to make sure you want to check the app. Not all apps are created equal. A lot of the good right. controllers are really good apps. You can control the different type of settings. And make sure that uh, whichever one you go with uh, has the option to, to provide extenders with finished ends, that you're not there. You know, these tiny RGB wires are such a little bugger to play with. Uh, you want to make sure they have, you know, the extensions and the, or yep. the, um, the, the, the plugs that you could adapt. Um, another question coming in from Tony Tamello over at our friends at Advanced Electronics in Winnipeg. Are there any plans on upgrading the single chassis deck? Well, that's a really good question. Um, at the moment, I'm not sure. Um, again, uh, John Zimmerman, who's the brand manager for Clarion, he's the one that kind of has the roadmap for where the line's going to be going. Um, uh, please, in the chat, you know, if you're looking for upgrades, let us know what you would like to see on it. Um, that's been a very popular model, and curious to see what else you guys would like to see. Very, very cool. Is I gotta ask from a boat manufacturing side. I don't know if you can answer this. This is a kind of a, gen, a generic marine audio question. Is that size kind of still the standard, or what is the standard now from a from a OEM perspective? It's definitely gotten away from the dune size. That's I mean, what I'm what wondering because you know, I haven't seen many of those on new boats. Yeah, it's like what you're seeing with the CMM, you know, 30 and the CMM 20, and obviously the BB as well now with the black box units through the NEMA. Like when you, especially when you look at the ski boat now, you don't have the room you used to have. The glove box is premium real estate. And especially when you start looking at fishing boats, center console boats, you have this, you know, big panel where the captain's sitting, but you got your MFD, your controls, your gauges, everything's there. You don't have room for a, a large source unit now. So these more compact, uh, you know, displays, if you will, um, really is where it's going. And again, even better with the black box option, if you have a compatible MFD through the NEMA 2K network. Um, my last question, I'll pass the mic to Dave, if you have a question or not, Dave. What a great option for Beyond Marine. Uh, nice unit that you could put into, you know, a, an ATV, a UTV, side-by-side, -side, great features there with a the color screen. Wanted to point that out. When I saw that, I was like, mm, that would look mm -hmm. slick just not on a vessel, other stuff too. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. You know, we say Salt Sun certified, but yeah, I mean, yeah, motorsports, off road. Um, you know, that's, you know, again, one of the key reasons we wanted to keep the M608, the M508, and the, uh, the gauge radio was there's still a lot of uses for those outside of marine. Again, you know, golf carts, mm -hmm. uh, water skis, or personal watercraft for the gauge radio. And that's something you can easily just drop into a hole right in front of you. And, you know, while you're, you know, having fun on the water, you can just quickly touch it, change your source, whatever it may be, and you're good to go. So for those or even smaller vessels, you know, you get some of these really small fishing boats. Those are great options for a, a basic, you know, deck and two, deck and four type system. So um, Absolutely. definitely a lot of uses for them outside of just a standard boat. Not to mention, you know, there's a lot of old vessels out there that are still sporting yep. the old school single din, you know, so. Um, Plenty of radios that probably need to be changed due to weather, wear, whatever it is. <laughs> Jam CD slots. <clears throat> Seen that a lot on Marine. Yeah. yeah. No blue. The whole yet. CD uh, on a boat never made a lot of sense. No, it didn't. But you know skip, there's a... Skip, skip, Hold on. Skip. Clarion has sold a ton of those. Let's be clear. I think everyone has. <laughs> Everybody has. Um, here's a big question I say for the end. This is a new product. 
What's the timelines looking like, guys? Oh, I, on our end, it's it's looking good. What I was told was end of Q2, and as soon as we get it, it should be a short right period. up to Dave. Yeah, short period of time right after that. So, you know, we're looking uh, hopefully in the upcoming weeks, we'll see what happens. You know, could be two, could be four, could be a few more, but uh, I'm sure when it gets here, it'll uh, 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 be rushing out the door, so to speak. Well, call your Gemsend reps, and if you're in the U.S., call whoever you get your jail. Good, uh, sorry, Cla see, I keep messing that up. Clarion Marine <laughs> goodies from, um, because yeah, this stuff is coming up. Rob, I'm not going to hold you any longer. Thank you so much again for joining us today. Uh, look forward to every time you come on. But uh, thank you for the presentation and updating us on all these cool new source unit goodies from Clarion Marine. Of course. Once again, thanks for having me. Take care now. Yep. Thanks, Rob. There, so, Dave, pretty exciting product. I know. Um, the, you know, anybody who does marine obviously has a history, uh, most more than likely with Clarion to see new, fresh, engineered design products. Pretty exciting stuff. It's uh, a heritage brand, right? So mm -hmm. you know, so many people are familiar with it. Uh, you know, anybody that's been in the boating has has come across the name. You know, you, so from a retailer standpoint, you know, you're not trying to uh, convince somebody into taking a chance on something they may not, you know, be sold on just because they've, they've never heard of it. So that's definitely one of the, the greatest things about the Clarion Marine side of things. And I, I just want to go back to one of the questions that was asked earlier. Ryan was asking about the RGB controller. Um, there is one coming from Clarion down, down the road. I've, I've seen images, I've seen pictures, you know, I think it's sooner than later, but in the meantime, for immediate uses, uh, you can hardwire it to, to a solid color as you can mm -hmm. with any RGB speaker, or you can use, you know, the favorite RGB controller um, of your choice uh, out there until ours comes out there. And uh, last but not least, Ben, you know, you were talking about buttons and knobs and that sort of thing. You know, the trend has definitely been towards making source units more ergonomic. Um, you know, you're you're moving at high speeds on the <laughs> boat. You're bouncing Dave, I around. I never understood the fifty thousand buttons on a source unit on a boat. You can't touch them precisely when the boat is running. It's not possible. I think that's probably because it came from an era where you were just kind of converting a car audio head unit and you know making moderate changes and bringing it into the marine environment. But now that you know specific source units are being developed, you know we know that. You know, you can't have a, uh, you know, half a centimeter by half a centimeter <laughs> button or whatever. You need something bigger and you need that knob so that, you know, you're not accidentally jacking up the volume to 50, you know, because you, you know, uh, uh, you're bouncing around. So okay. a lot of thought have gone into the, those radios. And I love the the uh, um, the new display for anybody that's wearing polarized sunglasses. I mean, that's kind of cool, you know. It's, well, not just cool. It, it's a must have. Yeah. Everybody who boats, okay, I'm not saying everybody. That's or fishes, statement. or fishes, right? Anybody who spends any amount of time on a vessel on the water, I would yeah. put money that they are most likely wearing polarized glasses. You want to see the waves. You want to see obstructions in the water. It's a safety thing, too. You don't want the reflection of water no. blinding you, yeah. Yeah, so you don't want to be doing this every time you're looking down on your screen, you know what I'm saying? So anyhow, um, and on that knob topic, yeah, I'll take Rob's word for it. I'm sure when you dial that potentiometer, it probably feels pretty darn slick. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but pretty confident. Yeah, that feeling is gonna be right, you know, right on. You know what I mean? Cool. Absolutely. Dave, that's it. We put up the numbers. Call you. Call your gang. Gem send. Get yourself some Clarion Marine, especially these new source units. Thank you so much for being on today, Dave. Just a quick shout out uh, to Antonio De Rosa because he's our Clarion lead guy. So Antonio, Mr. Marine. Anybody that is looking for information, you know, reach you can reach anybody from our team, and Antonio is. Uh, our, our key guy on the Clarion Marine side of things. So uh, feel free to talk to him. Thanks. Shout out to Antonio De Rosa. All right. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate Thank it. You soon. There you have it, guys. Thanks for sticking with us on this Clarion Marine presentation. A big shout out to Rob Haynes for joining us again with uh, all that insight. And Dave, of course, from Jemsen. This wraps up our Marine audio sessions. It's been a blast these last few days you know, one brand at a time every day in the marine audio category, but it's that time we are switching gears to our next session, which will be power sports. 
power sports sessions start tomorrow. We start with Stinger and we go right through till Tuesday, April 19th. There are some great brands that are here that are partaking in this event. We've got Power Base, Rockford, Stinger, DB Drive, Memphis, MTX, and Kicker, all the great brands that you want to hear about, all about power sports sessions. That starts tomorrow. We also have our CMA Live kicking off the power sports going down tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, right here at cmanetworks.com. We've got some big brands going on there. We're going to get, if you want to know about what's going on in power sports, tune in tonight. You'll hear from five of the biggest brands and you'll really get an idea of what's happening in the segment. Thanks again for tuning in. Make sure you check out our new website, all new redesign. I'm sure you've checked it already, but search for your favorite brands, your favorite trainer, your favorite content through all our new search options, cmanetworks.com. Thanks for tuning in. This is CMA Connected presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's last call out radio. Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?